I'm Ryan from Make Test Battle, and in a lot of our videos we feature 3D printed parts, uh, but we always gloss over how they're actually created. So I wanted to take a bit more of a behind the scenes -y look at how 3D parts are actually made. In this particular video, we're going to be comparing two printers, one which is 10 times the price of the other. We're going to pay particular attention to the importance of bed leveling and why a heated bed is so important. It's a 3D printing party, so I want to do some printing, obviously, that's why we got these printers, but I also want to teach you guys how to use SolidWorks, because it's way more powerful than Google SketchUp, and it's really good. If you know how to use it well, you can make incredible things, is what we're going to try to do. So, I have the Ultimaker 2, made by Ultimaker, funnily <laughs> enough. No I've way. had it for about 18 months, and have had nothing but troubles, but it's fixed now. We'll see. It's a printer that's designed to work out of the box, but mine had, I think I just got the only lemon they've ever made and it just had problems. I've done a lot of fixes myself. The control board blew up and I had to get it, you know, completely replaced. Hot end's been replaced, I've fixed the extrude. Basically, it's, it's all had work. Now I think it just works because I've done, I've done about four or five prints and they've come out smoothly and without any dramas and I've never been able to do that before because I got a bad one. I should have investigated the issues 12 months ago but I didn't have the time. Get a printer they said, it'll be fun they said. No, get a printer they said, it'll be an experience they said. I knew that this was what I was getting myself into when I bought this sort of thing. You know, I've had fun. I've had fun debugging it, it sucked and I didn't enjoy it, but I had fun. Cash has just stepped into the 3D printing space. What have you got Cash? I have a Printrite DIY 3D printer 2, I think it was. And I don't know much about it. Thanks, I've had it for a month. It's been nothing but a dream and really well, except when I, when I made a mistake and I clogged the filament somehow. Just out of curiosity, what's the price difference we're looking at here between the two? How much is that one? 400 including shipping. This is made in the Netherlands, so including the shipping, this was about 4,000. If I remember right, this was made in the Pyongyang district. <laughs> <laughs> to get a heated bed and the case done and all that outside the cost of the filament because they want me to print things, I think it's going to cost me an extra 250 Fair enough. So in terms of differences, there's a few specific differences between the prints. This is absolute bare bones, whereas this is reaching the top tier of the home semi-professional market. So Prosumer. Prosumer. That's, yeah, that's the term for it. So some of the things that my printer has that this one doesn't, for example, this has a LCD control screen so that you can adjust all of the settings, configure the printer on board. So we've got this little dial, clicks like a button. It's also got, you know, easily accessible SD card. The bed itself, well, this, this one has an SD card. It's just kind of- In there and it's through there, but you can't really see it unless you know it that. Yeah, heated bed with a removable build plate. And that will allow me to print ABS quite easily and also get better bed adhesion. I can also just take the, and just easily remove parts. Uh, this obviously has an enclosure that came with it, which mm. is important for keeping the temperature consistent. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> very important. <laughs> Particularly for ABS. This has four screws to get that off. Um, ah, no, the other difference, this one uses uh, 1.75 millimeter filament and my one uses three millimeter filament. Uh, my extruder is also with a Bowden tube style, so it's got a Teflon tube, whereas this extruder is directly above the nozzle. That doesn't really change much though. What we're doing now is putting on the blue tape. It has a really nice rough surface. It gets really good bonding when the filament goes down. Uh, it's much, much, much better than glass. The trick is you basically just get strips of tape and you lay them across on the bed and you try and line it up so that there's no overlap or gap. So I have to coat my bed as well, and I use Tresemme, used by professionals hair liqueur. It's exactly the same as what they recommended uh, chemically, except one, this smells much nicer, and is about half the price. Don't mess around with your G-code once it's operates. The bed's not fully solid. I'm meant to put, I think I was meant to put caps or something in that, or then with the actual other layer of tape. And what knife are you using? This is my Swedish knife that I bought when I was I reckon we could even dedicate a video to that knife. <laughs> I'd love to dedicate a video to this knife, but I need to sharpen it. 
So the first thing I think would be a really good thing to print is Jodo Cast's Krinkov Iron Sight. If you've seen any of his work, you'll know it's a fantastic piece, and if you haven't already, definitely check out his stuff. But this particular piece is available on Thingiverse, so we're going to give it a print. I've downloaded the model and thrown it into Cura. So once that's done compiling, we chuck it on the SD card here. We take this. For the uninitiated, what does Cura do? Cura is a program that takes a 3D model and converts it into a code that the printer understands. The printer can only understand things like go here, squeeze out this much plastic, move here. Heat it's up an instruction this set. Exactly. And so we have to translate this physical model into layers. The Cura program slices up the model, takes that slices, turns it into the instructions, puts it on the SD card, and we can print. I scroll to the iron site and print. So now a few things have to happen. The bed, actually I'm going to tune this, is going to be set to 45 degrees. And so that's got to heat up. And then the nozzle has to heat up. And once that's ready, start printing. Oh, that has come out really nicely. Pretty damn happy with that. It should sit. You got to drill that out, but it should sit like that. Nice. Well, that'll look pretty cool, I think. This is a really fun little thing. What is it? Uh, it's a key for shopping trolleys. So instead of having to put your dollar coin in, you can put the key in and then it will just angle out. Yeah. Hey. There we go. Gosh, something doesn't seem right. That's weird. What the f uh, You go back to that, um, the connection. I think it's a connection. Uh, use ping pong. Yeah, that wasn't turned on. That's exactly the problem. All right, it'll work now. It was waiting to send the it's actual- It's waiting for the acknowledgement. Which is why I was going slowly. 3D printing! Yeah! Did because we didn't tick that box, it wasn't working. That's what we wanted to see. Uh, also, your, layers, your bed leveling is uh, way off, Cash. I know. Yeah, dude, you really want to- Better bed. No, 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 you want a bed level better. If you get that gap wrong, it doesn't stick right and it's downhill from there. The way your um, first layer works is it basically does a spiral yeah. for the first layer, then it does a solid fill for the second, and then it yeah. starts doing your cross hatching. You've got a lot of peeling happening. Uh, it's rolling back and forth. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so it's not stuck, it's not peeling. Uh, that's pro oh, that's yeah, probably the end where you replace the tape and you no longer have thingy on. Oh, cancel that. Cancel that. Cancel. We need to re-level the bed for it to actually work. Uh, because it's not contacting the bed well enough, it's just lifted up. Because as the plastic cools down, it shrinks slightly, and that thermal stress is actually enough to warp the parts. Very common problem. So you definitely need to yeah. level it much better. Mm. So let's do that. Oh, does it just assume that where you turn it on is zero? Yeah. Oh, okay, there's no actual bed leveling procedure. And then you adjust that screw as needed. Alright. Here. That's probably good. Uh, push the X forward. Test that, just to make sure that's okay. Uh, it should be. Ah, uh, no, your bed isn't very flat. That's unfortunate. That's what you need to Oh no, press. that's alright. It just dropped down a bit when I pushed on it. Alright, well, so, just plug it in? No, no, don't plug it in. Okay. Big mistake. So, then you get this. It goes there. What's that doing? Pushing that, on a micro switch. That is zero. So that makes, that's just set it to zero. Zero is determined by a screw pushing on a micro switch. Oh, oh yeah, that's the limit switch. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Now, if you can hit zero. We still need to check to see if yep. there's actually. So X and Y to keep going up. Yeah. If that oh, works. okay. That is still way too high. Press Z. Oh, I can just home Z. Duh. Yep. Much better. Let's give that a shot. So do we still have our Yep, it should all be there. Ah, sweet, so we can just run job again? Yep. So let's compare that to the Ultimaker version of leveling the bed. We cycle through the menu to maintenance, build plate, and it guides us through. 
So what it does is it pulls the build plate up to where it knows roughly where it should be. And then what I do is I rotate this guy until it's roughly in place. It pulls it to this corner. I have these little threaded knobby things. It's already level, so I don't need to really do this. And then we do it again. And it'll go back to here, 0.1 mil feeler gauge. And then there's a little screw on the bottom. That's that one done. Comes to this side. Ah, the print's starting again. That looks nicer already. I would still say that it's a bit too high. It probably is, but I'm gonna have to reset it anyway when I get home. Yeah. Honestly, it, what you actually want it to be is the nozzle so close to the bed that when the plastic goes down, it actually smudges out the first layer. Lifted so easily. Nice. So that's a little imitation coin. So there you have it. If you want a more detailed review of either my Ultimaker 2 or Cash's print right from Hobby King, let us know in the comments. And if you like these sort of behind the scenes or more printer focused videos, let us know as well. If you're interested in buying either of these two printers, check out the links below, but I'd highly recommend you do a lot of research on the topic before you commit to one printer or the other. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and follow us on Facebook.